Now, the end of this lecture is about death. <clears throat> and the question is, how do you create vision through death? And I'm going to show you how that's measured. Um, we have Karatkov's here. Do I have, yes, Karatkov's book. So we are on slide number 72. So Karatkov's book is 79. So this is the book, Light After Life, Life, and this is my friend, Dr. Karatkov. It's called Die Seele, the soul in, in German. And this is measurement of how many hours it takes the aura to leave the body if you use cadavers and uh, GDV for fingertip curlia, uh, uh, now called BioWell. And D, we conclude that Tibetans are right. 10 and 36 hours is when your aura leaves the body. And this is what your ghost looks like. Now, if you want to get into that distribution of vision, through death, what is the physics? Well, so there is strong evidence that the fractal conjugate electric field causes vision is the same as the fractal conjugate little electric black hole which allows memory through death. Let's start with the data. Ray Moody, I love him, he's a hero. I lecture with him in Italy all the time. Lightafterlife.com, he's wonderful. So he has abundant data. Medical surgeons, many of them, have documented clinically for sure that if the death is relatively peaceful, the visions, vision, the visions, the visions seen at death will be electrically contagious. That means medical doctors standing over, the, somebody's dying, and suddenly they're all seeing the same thing. Vision. We're here to study the electric field that causes vision. Oh, we just happen to have tripped over the electric field that causes successful death. That is not an axiomoron. So why are the visions seen at death electrically contagious? We know the Hopi, the sacred tribes, the ancient, all put their sacred burial grounds and their pyramids and their Agni Hotri and their labyrinths and their cathedrals and their druid phone calls and their Aboriginal song lines and dream checks, all at earth grid magnetic line cross points, the Dodeca Ecosa earth grid, where you embed longitudinal. So you get embedded in the longitudinal, you get in the charge distribution efficiency called, not only action at a distance, but collective unconscious, communion of saints, ancestral memory, lucid dreaming, remote viewing. All of these things are enabled by embedding longitudinal, meaning sunrise, sunset, magnetic cross points, get the four directions lined up, you phase conjugate, and you enable DNA radio to happen. So if you want your burial ground, your ancestral burial ground to work, if you happen to be a good electrical engineer that knows how to design elect ancestral burial grounds, me for example, <laughs> you need to embed these longitudinal magnetic cross points. And remember, when Dr. Karakov, we're referring to that here, he followed the Kogi to where they made phone calls to ancestors. He made, measured the fractality of the air because they needed visions of ancestors, vision, vision, vision of ancestors. <laughs> and sure enough, the air was fractal. That is charge distribution permissive, meaning phase conjugate launch. This means that your average hospital right here, I went into this hospital in Perpignan, and I have never, ever so immediately felt nausea caused by a building than in this hospital. I had synthetic everywhere, dead air, lots of electrosmog, the wrong frequencies everywhere, preventing vision so this hospital is where they send people to die, and actually, it is literally, literally, literally the definition of hell. There is no better definition of hell right there, preventing charge distribution efficiency. Charge distribution is called, efficiency is called hey, ave, heaven. Oh, I mean, plains of Sharon. I mean, the phase conjugate dielectric electron shells of gold powder. <laughs> no, I mean, so if you want to go to heaven, <laughs> you need to understand how to design a place for birth and death. <laughs> and so here is a picture of biologic architecture. Remember, biologic architecture creates vision. Now we know why, because there's a frequency signature to vision. <laughs> and, uh, and we have the best curriculum for biologic architecture on the planet, golden mean on info slash architecture, which starts with fractality and Af African architecture, which is well known. And so there we talk about three different ways to measure charge, fractality, and air. It's very simple. <laughs> you need to decide if your architect should get a paycheck. Pretty easy, right? <laughs> you go into the building and you measure the charge in the building to determine if that would cause a seed to grow and therefore allow a child to have vision. <laughs> and here's how you do it. Three different ways to measure charge, fractality, and space. And you can predict in advance which building will cause a seed to grow. <laughs> Therefore, whether an architect should get a paycheck. 
<laughs> we might have to burn down, the, I mean, we have to throw out the library in every architecture university on the planet, but I think that's a good idea, actually. So here's, this is, a, the, here's air in a poisonous space, a square metal building. The air is not fractal and charge distribution is prevented. That can be measured with Curlian, GTV, or our power spectra technology for measuring life force in space, which is all part of flameandmind.com. Here's the same measurement, except in a sacred stone circle or a circle of trees. And look at charge distribution is enabled. So three different ways. And then there's the electric field ability to make life. So here's plants, a, a seed caused to grow. Here's a, a, a flower caused to stabilize. This is how you make life force with that frequency recipe, the same one that causes vision. <laughs> And these are examples of the measurements of life force in sacred space available from flameandmind.com. We use, we spectrum analyze a microvolt and we can tell what building or tree is going to be alive or dead. The, in the background here, you'll see the blue, which is the frequencies that should be there because they're Schumann. And here's the white. Those are the frequencies that are there. And so that's how we analyze this. And this slide we showed you already. So then just uh, to finish this thought here. So here is Heinrich Cluve on the right, and he's interviewed hundreds of people who have just died. LSD experiences, but mostly near-death experiences, NDE. And he said, what did you see? He said, they said they saw a lattice, a cobweb, and a tunnel, then a spiral, and then it started over. So there's a geometric map to successful dying, and actually a recently a friend of mine, I'm honoring Dan Schreiber here, died, and he came back through his lucid dreaming partner and confirmed that not only was this correct, but that he heard the audio heterodyne hum sound buzz that went with this, and we know why. So not only is there a vision of death, but there's a sound of death, and we know why. Because the successful black hole required is phase conjugate fractal charge implosion. So, and we credit to uh, the artwork here from the, the famous. And so this is the lattice cobweb tunnel spiral, and now we know why, because you're seeing the braiding algorithms of DNA, the sequence of visions of lattice. You take a cube, you tilt it up, and you make a dodecahedron, you, and uh, so you have lattice to cobweb, which is dodec as a center. And then you take that dodeca down a helix, and that makes a tunnel, and then this helix comes to a point, which is DNA, and that comes to a point, and then you have a spiral, and then you do it over and over and over. And all you're doing each time is adding a superposed axis of charge spin symmetry, the only possible definition of going to the next dimension. And so basically all death is doing is creating a black hole. It's very simple. So to die successfully, you must create a successful electric black hole. And that enables you to create a charge space. You know, rearrange the biological materials, be pent and fractal and make a magnetic map to make a building that will enable successful death and vision. Thank you very much. I'm Dan Winter. I'm ready for questions. Appreciate it.